due next. It'll be due the week after the midterm. Um, and I'm using these uh, labs from a site called Open Intro. Okay, the Open Intro is like a it's a free statistics textbook. It's actually not a bad textbook, uh, and it's free, but uh, but it's not the one that UCLA uses. So you had to pay your hundred dollar, hundred two hundred dollar textbook. But okay, but anyway. Um, what we are looking at is we're looking at real estate data from Ames, Iowa. So it's like they just have a, a whole bunch of listings of houses that sold in, um, in Iowa. And we're, we're taking a look at that, um, that information. Okay. And so to load, uh, to get the data into your computer, you just copy these two commands into our studio now it should work <laughs> uh, and that's the uh, the operative there is that it should and sometimes it doesn't so okay so, so uh, I, I shouldn't do this this is a, this is a good example of what not to do um, if you're gonna copy um, text from the document I would say copy it into a plain text editor first, and the PDF contains all these like hidden character breaks and stuff like that, and so it will it will mess up if you try to copy it directly. So copy it into a plain text editor, go through, and delete any unnecessary returns or breaks or things like that. Um, so the text that you put into R looks like the text that's in the the lab. And then you, you um, copy it over. Now, sometimes when you um, enter it, the, uh, you might get an error with this download file command. And, and I'll try it. So it, it worked fine on my, um, on my system. But it, it's possible that it doesn't work on yours. And so in that case, you can um, download the file directly. Um, by by copying this URL, but then um, so if you copy this URL, it should try to okay. Ugh. Well, this wasn't what I was expecting, but you might be able to do a save as. But I think uh, shoot. Now, of course, um, of course, this is not what we want. Um, well, let me see if I can, um, I'll try to post the data file so you can download it and you can load the data into it. Now the thing is, is you're not going to load it as an import data set or anything like that. It's not a data set. This is our data, which is kind of like a binary file and you want to load it into R directly. You don't want to do import data set because it will error out. So to do that, um, it, you know, if you do this download file thing and it works, great. Okay, but if, if it doesn't work, this is what you'd have to do. And I'll, and I'll post the data set somewhere online, but it'll, um, you're just going to copy it into your working directory. Okay, and so when you're in our studio, um, you can navigate through here to a certain working directory, or you can um, uh, you can go to set working directory under a session, and you're going to navigate to wherever the file is located. Okay, so you know you download it to your downloads folder, you download it to your desktop. You're going to set the desktop or your download folder as your working directory, and then you type in load. Uh, aims dot r data okay and it's case sensitive so you do that okay and you do that and it will load the data as well as functions into your workspace okay if you try to do import data set it's it's gonna freak out because it doesn't it's not expecting that okay so you have to load it this way so it's different from the way you entered the BP data 
you've got to use this command load our data. It's not a CSV, it's not anything like that. You've got to use load uh, the name of the thing. Okay. If um, you know if the download file thing works, um, it will download it to your working directory, and then so when you type load a um, aims our data, it'll it'll be in the working directory. Okay. But if if it doesn't work and you got to download the file manually, you're gonna have to do that. Okay. So again, um, so when you load that, you're gonna have one data set in there, which is the um, the data itself, and this is the uh, real estate information. So this is uh, the property ID, and it's got all of this stuff. It talks about you know the size of the lot and the size of the house, and you know how many bathrooms and how many bedrooms and how much it's sold for, right? And this is when you say, oh man, it's so expensive to live in California, but um, but here we have it, and. Uh, and so you want to, um, we're going to work with two things, which is gr.livingarea, which is the square footage of the house, the ground living area, and the sale price of the home. Okay, so, you know, sometimes trying to copy text from a PDF just doesn't work that well. So in these cases, you know, especially if it's a short command, just recreate it by hand. So aims dollar sign gr dot live dot area. Okay, and then price will be aims dollar sign sale price. Okay, and I can just copy this and run these two commands. Okay, and then so we can see that that, that ran successfully. Alright, and then we can uh, we can do create summaries and histograms. Okay, so let's make a histogram of area. Okay, and so we see, what do we see here? If I zoom in, um, so this isn't so great, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some breaks, and I think that's actually the next, next line here. Uh, hmm? Oh, well they don't do it, but did they? Okay, breaks equals 25. Okay, so this kind of gives us a little bit finer detail in our um, our, uh, our histogram, and we can see, okay, so most houses are around, you know, a little under 1,000 square feet to around 2,000 square feet, and that makes sense. But yeah, you know, we have some houses with 5,000 square feet and we do have a few houses with you know under 500 square feet and things like that but most are kind of in this kind of thousand-ish to 2,000 square feet and that makes sense but it is right skewed because you can have really big houses um, but you can't really have less than a certain size house okay and so we see that okay so anyway um, and we can uh, ask for the mean of area and or um, we can ask for the summary of area and it's going to give us things like the median and the quartiles and stuff like that or even the standard deviation of area and, and as you work through the lab it will uh, it will tell you all of these things that it wants you to do okay and so the first lab basically what it's going to have you do is it's going to have you create sampling distributions of the mean and what you're going to do is you're going to take samples samples in the beginning, samples of size 50. So you're selecting 50 random homes from uh, this data set. You're going to select 50 of them, take the sample mean, and you're going to do that over and over 5,000 times, and you're going to create a sampling distribution of those sample means. And that's what, um, that's what this first part does. I'm having trouble copying the text, and we'll see. And again, um, don't copy. In, uh, yeah, see it. I might. It'll be easier for me to just retype it than have to correct all of this stuff. Okay. So you might you might have the same experience that I am. Um, so this first command says uh, make a sequence of zero five thousand times, and then the next one says for i and one through 
5,000. I want you to uh, take a sample from area, samples of size 50, and take, um, take the mean of those 50 numbers and store it into sample means. And then we're going to make a histogram of sample underscore means 50. OK, so I do this. And so here we see the, um, and again, I probably want to do breaks 25 again. So I'll do a histogram sample means 50 breaks. 25. Okay, and so we get um, kind of this normal, normal distribution looking, looking thing with the mean around 1500. Okay, and and that's basically uh, what you're going to be doing in the first lab. It just says uh, do it again, and uh, um, and answer these questions. Okay, so um, basically. Uh, answer all of the questions, you know, exercises one through four, or, or I'm sorry, exercises uh, one through six, and answer those four questions, except for uh, uh, this last one about the textbook. Uh, ignore that one. Ignore number, five. ignore number five, which is what concepts are covered from the textbook in here, which you don't, you don't need to answer because we're not using their textbook. And then uh, the same thing um, for uh, Lab 4B. You work through uh, kind of the same data set. And here, um, they've created a function that creates confidence intervals. OK? And um, I guess my encouragement is read the lab carefully, OK? So <laughs> I think a lot of times uh, students in the past just kind of jump to the code sections or something like that and don't read kind of the explanation behind the code or things like that. Um, and so I, I would say read through the lab carefully as you work through it. I think it'll make more sense. Um, if for whatever reason the computer is not cooperating with you, um, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm happy to try to help you uh, figure out what's going on. Um, if you're getting all these error messages, copy basically the command that you're entering and the error message that you see. Um, and I'll try to answer, um, you know, I might ask for a screenshot if, uh, if I still have trouble answering. Um, and again, I, this is not due next week, it's the due uh, the week after. Um, and these are not supposed to be super frustrating labs. Um, I, I know that they can be. Um, but that's not my intention. So if you're, if you're struggling, send me an email. I'll be happy to try to help you out. Okay, uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll end there. And uh, good luck as you guys study this week. We'll see you guys next week for the, uh, the exam.